So today we're down in the laboratory to show you the kinds of stress testing we do on the electric eel wheel to make sure that it holds up to real world conditions for a very long time. And the wheel, I just shut it off, had been running for just over three weeks. So that's over 500 hours of continuous run. And uh, there is a little bit of wear that I'll, I'll show to people. Um, so if you look down right in there, you can see that there's uh, some dust here that came off of the, uh, the flyer. Even though we're using a really highly lubricated uh, Teflon-based uh, plastic here uh, for the, the bushings, there, there is a little bit of wear. But uh, we'll continue to run this and uh, see if there is a failure in the future. I suspect that I will not be able to run the electric eel wheel long enough to actually wear anything out. Um, it still functions great. Um, there's just a, a little bit of grooving here and a little bit of plastic has, has sort of worn off. But uh, I think that it's holding up really well. Uh, much better than uh, earlier tests. So this is something we've definitely been iterating through. But, but at this point, I think it'll uh, last for a lot of hours. I, I guess I can't really estimate, but 500 hours and we see just a, a little bit of wearing here. So go around to the back. Um, the, there's a, a small amount of wear back here as well, but it's actually even less. And that's because um, the diameter of this portion of the flyer is less. So um, the speed of the rotation of the outside of, of this surface against uh, this uh, lubricated brace is actually slower. So uh, this has always been, you know, an easier problem to solve. It was one of the, you know, we noticed early on that almost any plastic we chose actually worked fine here. But in the front, we did have to go through a variety of different plastics before we found uh, a combination that worked as, as well as these two. So there's two different types of testing. The reason I just shut it down is because uh, previously I had been running with a, a max or a very high tension um, on the uh, cable here and then that prevented the bobbin from spinning. Now I've actually locked the bobbin in place so that the bobbin and the flyer uh, actually turn together and what that's going to do is that's going to show me uh, what a lot of uh, friction on this this cable does and how long the uh, tension cable is actually gonna hold up which is another thing I'd like to run I mean I've done short tests before I've done 24 hour tests of, of this but now I just want to run this you know for a couple of weeks and uh, see if if this cable eventually wears out we do know that the cable is much more um, uh, the, the cable lasts a lot longer on, on this version than on previous versions because the plastic of the, the bobbin is much smoother. So in 24 hours, I could see uh, no wear on the cable. Uh, so that's a pretty good indicator that it's going to last a long time. But we want to run a, a long-term test. And, you know, after that, we'll go back to the other test. And we'll just keep running this wheel until stuff starts to go wrong. So we can hopefully uh, give people estimates on, like, how long the motor runs. Um, that sort of thing uh, but we know we're using the same motor we had used in the previous version and there were uh, just two failures out of uh, uh, 400 wheels that we sold so far and uh, I just replaced those for the people but um, we definitely want to give get some like idea of how long we should expect the motors to last and, and how long the the different parts will wear so uh, that's why we're doing all this stress testing, and uh, we'll definitely keep you updated if we find out anything interested, interesting.